Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who Big Finish review. In today's Doctor Who Big Finish review, I'll be taking a look at one of the latest Big Finish releases, The Grey Man on the Mountain. Big Finish's sort of Christmas special of the year. Last year we had uh, The Blood on Santa's Claw, but this year we've got The Grey Man of the Mountain featuring the seventh Doctor Ace and the Brigadier release I've been incredibly excited for. Let's take a look at the presentation of this release. Then we'll see whether it's been worth the hype. So taking a look at the cover art for the Grey Man of the Mountain. So we've got the Brigadier there, Ace, and then the Seventh Doctor there, and then sort of Ben McDewey with the sort of snowy background. Then we've got a hiker, the Grey Man, the TARDIS, and a forest background. I have to say that I really do love this cover. It's one of my favourite covers from the 2020 line of covers we've had. I just love it. It's a great cover. The side of the release. If you want to know more about the story, then do feel free to pause. And then we've got the cast list and the total running time being 120 minutes. So taking a look at the leaflet now. So if we open it up, we have the production credits, advertisement for Doctor Magazine, and a lovely photo of Sylvester McCoy. And then the next instalment in the main range, the Colony of Fear. And then we have the cover, but with the Sylvester McCoy Seventh Doctor logo. And the disc art is exactly the same for both discs. The Grey Man of the Mountain, a story I've been hugely excited for since the cover and synopsis was revealed. So is this a festive treat for your ears? Well, yes, it's an absolute joy and is a wonderful little Christmas ghost story full of great character moments and it is truly lovely to have the Brigadier back in the main range as him and the Seventh Doctor have a great rapport. So let's take a closer look at the story. Part one, the tone of the story is set straight away with it having a cold, wintry feel with an uneasy edge as these hikers are running in terror down at Ben McDewey from The Grey Man. And now this is one thing what I absolutely love about this story is that how Elizabeth Miles establishes The Grey Man as she actually uses folklore tales and sort of sightings, um, actual sighting reports, and has incorporated that in the story to give the story an even more authentic feel of the Grey Man, which I really uh, do like. So it's sort of using the tales from 1881 when I think the first sightings of the Grey Man was. So it sets the mystery of what is the Grey Man, you know, with people feeling a presence or footstep. As they say, Ben McDewey, you know, the second highest point in Scotland is said to be haunted. So we learn all this from a character called Kirsty, who is off on a hike to explore as she's a content creator exploring um, all those different types of things like haunted um, buildings and all that sort of thing so she wants to explore the haunted mountain um, so this sort of reminds me a bit of the shining man that book by Kevin Scott a 12 doctor book um, where you've got the sort of youtuber vlogger type of people ex sort of trying to uncover the mystery of the shining man um, so this is sort of reminds me a little bit of that in a way so the doctor and Ace arrive hoping it to be Edinburgh in just in time for a New Year's Eve knees up Instead, they arrive on the 22nd of December. So this scene I absolutely love because it really does sort of show the dynamic between the Seventh Doctor and Ace, which is just a lovely little bit of character moment between those two characters. And I have to say that the music for this is just incredibly well for this scene. That sort of bagpipes really giving that sort of Scottish feel to the to the story, and also having sort of a military drum, which I think is a nice little touch to sort of symbolise all the brigadiers in this story. So I thought that was quite a nice little nod to the Brigadier within the music. Um, speaking of the Brigadier, um, the Brigadier is waiting for an expert, not the Doctor, but this does lead to a very wholesome reunion between the Brigadier and the Doctor, as the Brigadier is in full detective mode with these ominous reports as he plans to investigate the Grey Man. As five people came down the mountain in a paranoid state, paralysed with fear, and one of those hikers is staying in the inn where the Brigadier is, um, which does lead to quite a bleak uh, moment and a bleak ending for that character, and two of those people um, haven't been found. They're still up on Ben McDewey, supposedly. So while this is all happening, Ace has been a little bit sulky, you know, but she's not in Edinburgh, it's not New Year's, um, so she's a little bit in a grumpy mood. But as soon as she meets Kirsty and she learns of Ben McDewey being haunted, um, we do get a lovely little callback to Ghostlight with Ace saying, I don't like haunted houses. Um, but this story is full of some lovely little nice nods like the Yeti and the Loch Ness Monster. Um, so Ace joins Kirsty as they set off to climb at Ben McDewey with excellent sound design, um, really showing how treacherous mountain climbing is from the snow crunching under the feet, the wind whistling, to a mist covered mountains. It really does give you some great visual imagery and definitely enhances the atmosphere of this story. As the Brigadier expert arrives called Thaddeus, um, who is your typical sort of ego driven character, you know, very gun ho as the Brigadier doesn't want the Doctor to interfere with the Brigadier's investigation. Part two, the Brigadier begins his investigation as they begin to climb Ben McDewey. As Ace and Kirsty make camp 
as they discover the missing hiker who's paranoid. But as soon as they mention the grey man, he runs off and of course Ace and Kirsty go chasing after him as we learn more about Thaddeus' previous expeditions in the Himalayas, with the Doctor having a wonderful speech about what's in the mist, you know, our minds go paranoid and start imagining what lurks uh, within the mist, which I really do like because it really just adds to the atmosphere and this bit is when the sort of expedition team start to feel a little unsettled, like something's crawling down the back of your neck which just allows the music to go really full spine chilling mode which I love. So Ace and Kirsty, while trying to find the hiker find these massive footprints. So is this the grey man? Leading to the doctor to be rather curious to know what has Ace found and why is this Kern so important? As the grey man approaches as blizzards happen and the doctor confronts the grey man and why can't you look at the grey man's face and what happens if you do? All leading to a very traditional classic cliffhanger. So we have a great resolution to the cliffhanger involving the Brigadier, you know, why is the Doctor gone all strange as we learn more about the Grey Man? You know, and this part is just full of lovely character modes between the Doctor and the Brigadier and Ace and Kirsty. As Kirsty has frostbite, as we learn her backstory of why she's there and the Doctor begins to ponder, why Ben McDewey? Of all the mountains of the world, why this one? Why can't humans just leave something alone, you know, why are they incapable of sharing their planet? Um, so it's quite an interesting idea raised within this story and I guess there's a little nice little callback to Doctor Who and the Silurian. But something has changed on Earth, you know, something has made the Grey Man dangerous, so what has made the Grey Man become this very hostile force? As we see Ace and Kirsty reunite with the Doctor, but that doesn't really last long because Ace and Kirsty are sent back down to the mountain to get Kirsty medical help to try and treat her frostbite. But as they descend the mountain, they hear wolves and they feel like they recognise some of the landmarks but some things have changed as we learn the mystery of the Kern and where is this sort of fear coming from as the Doctor has disappeared leading to a very tense cliffhanger. Part 4, so Ace and Kirsty are captured by the Grey Man. Now this is when the story loses it for me as we lose the atmosphere um, because the first three parts are just full of this very rich, creepy, unsettling atmosphere. You know, what's lurking in the mist? You know, where is the Grey Man? So I love all that. Um, and sort of the mystery is all solved within this as this part has a few twists and once the threat's revealed the story doesn't really know what to do um, as everything sort of the past three episodes have, have built up has just sort of been stripped back you know that just leaves the story just to fizzle out um, but that being said this part does offer some great moments you know with Ace using a Nitro 9 the Brig confronting the Grey Man and offering his gun and his expedition having a Christmas sing song you know as we learn you know why it's not good to look at the Grey Man's face and the ending of the story is rather lovely as the Doctor has to stay a little while longer in Scotland to make sure his plan works. So we do have a nice little joke um, about the unit dating of the Doctor going, oh, I wonder what year it is. So I think that's a nice little way to end the story. It's just a shame that this sort of story just loses all the, the atmosphere, what it's built up in the first three episodes is sort of all gone within episode four, which is a little bit of a shame, but it still has some great moments. So moving on to characters now with the seventh Doctor played by Sylvester McCoy, a wonderful performance, bringing a very joyous and enthusiastic side to his Doctor with him being back in Scotland. Um, so it's, it's, it's rather charming. I feel like the seventh Doctor is pretty charming within this story, as we do have some great sort of speeches, what he says, you know, like the part two speech about what lurks in the mist and the sense of paranoia and has some wonderful little jokes with the Brigadier, you know, going, don't worry, Brigadier, there'll be something to shoot sooner or later, which I just love how the Brigadier and the Doctor have sort of a nice little rapport within it, like a little back and forth of jokes, which I really do like within this. But also another thing what I like about this story is this story gives the Seventh Doctor a few more quiet moments, especially when he discovers one of the hikers who have died, so it leads the Seventh Doctor to be quite a have a nice little quiet moment which I really do like within this story you know but the seventh doctor is incredibly curious by the report alongside sort of the last two parts it gives Sylvester McCoy something a little bit different to do lets him play a different side to his doctor and we, of course we do have his classic faith ace played by Sophie Aldridge superb performance with her being this sort of quite sulky at the start but her soon spirits are raised when she meets Kirsty, which leads to some very beautiful character moments um, with us seeing a more softer and more caring side to ace and I love the little detail that Ace doesn't know about vlogs or Wi-Fi or, you know, how phone signal works. So I think that that's a really nice little detail, um, what I really do appreciate. So it just adds more to Ace's character. But she wouldn't know about those things because obviously she's from, you know, the 80s really. So I think that's a really nice little touch um, for the story. You know, she's not a very patient character, but as soon as she learns the Grey Man, you know, she becomes more invested in the story. I think that this is a fantastic story for Ace. I mean, if you're a fan of Ace, I mean, who isn't? Everybody loves Ace. I and mean, this is definitely a story 
you want to check out for because this has some wonderful character moments especially for Ace especially the more quieter moments for Ace because we get to see a more different side to Ace which I really like. The man, the myth, the legend, the Brigadier played by John Coleshaw. Now I have always praised John Coleshaw's Brigadier impression it's just incredibly uncanny and he does an excellent job within this story. Um, so the Brigadier very much takes a detective role you know leading an investigation with you know the events what happened after Battlefield with Morgane he felt that he couldn't really retire um, so you really get the sense of duty with his character the classic dry wit the Brigadier has you know and in terms of unit this very much does feel like a bridging point of how Kate Stewart got her philosophy as the Brigadier is very much science first um, within this so he's very much leading a sort of science expedition um, so it does feel like a nice bridge between. But part four, I really think the Brigadier shines, especially when he confronts the Grey Man in the speech about being an old soldier. And it just has some great sort of character moments of the Brigadier and just shows how well the Brigadier has progressed over the years. It just shows a lot of progression. Kirsty, played by Lucy Goldie, a wonderful job of a character being fully explored why she's there and why she wants to prove that she's brave. You know, she's incredibly resourceful and she's, you know, well researched into sort of climbing Ben McDewey. And she has some really fun little character moments you know and just is incredibly sweet character a really lovely sweet character who just works so well with ace so overall what are my thoughts on the gray man of the mountain well it's a great christmas ghost story with it feeling like a proper winter's tale full of mystery with this story letting your imagination flow with things being more scary but you don't see and what you don't know about this story though is driven by mystery really offers some brilliant character moments especially ace and kirsty as you can perceive a sort of a romantic undertone making it feel very sort of season 26 in Ace's characterization with it reminding me of Battlefield of Ace and um, I think it's Sho Lee or something like that and um, the character and then Kara from Survival so this story really does feel like a bit of a lost season 26 uh, style story the character moments of the Doctor and the Brigadier just chatting and drinking tea and having a mince pie is just wonderful it's just the wholesome content you really want so i feel like this release is a little bit quite wholesome with the character moment the gray man is a haunting idea which i really love as i love when doxy puts her own spin on folk tales and legends so i really do admire elizabeth miles and obviously using actual reports of the gray man and incorporating that into the actual story i think that was a really nice touch and gives the story a sense of realism uh, which i really do love um, because it just makes the story feel even more authentic with exploring this um, legend within Ben McDewey so I really do like that but my only real fault I have for this story is part four as the story strips back the atmosphere with the mystery practically being solved and it just leads the story to slowly fizzle out and I think that's a sort of a common criticism with most Doctor Who stories when they try and do a, you know a horror story or a chilling tale um, but I still think that it is an enjoyable listen, excellent sound design, eerie music, and it really does help set the mood, especially the, the music within this. And the sound design is excellent with sort of the, the howling wind and the snow crunching. You know, it just really shows how treacherous mountain climbing is and just, you know, the, you can just easily imagine and picture this story. So I really do enjoy The Grey Man on the Mountain, despite my flaw with part four. I'm going to give this one maybe a seven or an eight out of ten i think you know you know what i'm going to be generous i'm going to give it an eight out of ten i think that this is a really wonderful story wonderful character moments and a great mystery and a wonderful atmosphere and i highly recommend the gray man of the mountain so thank you very much for watching this big finish review i hope you have enjoyed it please do like and subscribe it really does help the channel out and i'll see you next time for more doctor who big finish related content so thank you very much and goodbye Oh,